from this video we'll start taking examples in support of natural selection the first example that we would start with is called industrial melanism this industrial melanism is a very very interesting example which supports this theory of natural selection in the early 19th century in england there was no industrial growth or no industries at that time so no industrial development due to which especially when we are talking of this uh, region that is england region the area where this was first uh, found out or detected was the place called birmingham there was no industry there were rather no industries so in this region in this particular period that is early 19th century a gray colored moth existed in large number the scientific name of this moth is biston betularia this moth was gray colored and the reason which was found out for its huge numbers was that as there were no industries the bark of the tree was or bark of the trees were covered with lichens because of no industrial development we can say the lichens grew in plenty we know that lichens are very sensitive to pollution as no industries no pollution lichens were growing all over the bark and the lichens are again grayish in color so this gray colored moth could blend or camouflage with that lichen very easily and that's why it multiplied in huge number at the same time so these were in plenty same time very few black moths were also detected and the scientific name of this black moth is same biston carbonaria and the reason why these black moths were very very few because as we said the lichens grew in plenty and the lichens were gray this black moth where it was very easily visible on this gray background and it was eaten up by the birds or other uh, bigger animals and so the number of gray was more and number of black was less after few years when the industrialization started industrialization resulted in production of smoke from the factories and soot this soot deposited on the bark and as we said that lichens are very sensitive to pollution as the soot or the smoke was released in the atmosphere the lichen started to disappear that means now the barks which were covered with gray colored lichens got uh, deposited with soot and obviously because of soot the color changed to black now the situation just got reversed in the original situation the black moth was at risk because it was easily detected on the gray background and the gray ones because they could blend with that gray background they survive and reproduce and that is why their number was in plenty this variation existed in the population now with the changed condition that 
That means when the industrialization started, the conditions changed. And in this changed condition, on this black background of suit, the black moth, they could blend easily. So on black uh, bark, a uh, black moth was not even visible. So black survived and because they survived, they reproduced. So their number increased. Now ba ba background turned black. So the gray colored moths, they became very, very clear on this darker background. So the gray moths were killed because they were easily visible. So now after the changed condition, the scenario changed completely. Originally, gray were more, black were less. As the conditions changed, the background also changed and the black ones, they blended very uh, perfectly in that background. So they survived, reproduced. The gray became very prominently visible and they killed. So the number of black increased and the gray ones, they became less. So their number was very, very less. After again few years, the conditions changed one more time. When the industrialization started, coal was used as the fuel. Now, when the conditions changed again, coal was replaced by electricity. So again, it was the time of industrialization, but the source or the fuel which was used was electricity. And as electricity does not result in formation of that much of smoke or soot, again, the lichens started to grow. Lichens grew in that area and they got uh, deposited on the bark. And the color of the bark again turned to gray. Changed condition. Here also in the population there was variation. Black moths were also there. Gray were also there. But black were in more number because they were able to blend with the black background. Gray were easily seen so they were killed. Now third time in the conditions changed. Lichens started to grow again. And because they grew, they uh, grew on the bark. So the color again became gray. So the gray moths could blend in that gray background. They survived, reproduced and their number increased. And the black ones again became very clearly visible on that lighter background. So the number of black moths decreased. So in every situation, the variations existed, but the nature selected that particular variation which was best adapted to that particular environmental condition. Originally, the conditions were, there were no industries, no smoke, no soot, so lichens were in plenty. The coloration which was of the lichens was gray, so the gray colored moth was the best suited in that environment, so nature selected it. Black one was not suitable for that because it was clearly seen and so got eliminated, but they still existed. Conditions changed. So in this changed condition, black one was better adapted. So nature selected black one. It reproduced and its number increased. Situations changed again. In this changed condition, the su most suited were the gray ones. So nature selected the one which was best adapted to that changed condition. Now this was the thing which was observed and it was called industrial melanism. The actual term industrial melanism was given to loss of the light colored moths due to industrial development and and their replacement by the dark moths and these moths were dark because they had more melanin 
So the light colored moth was replaced by the dark colored moth due to industrialization. So it was called industrial melanism. That is industrial development resulted into formation of that more melanin in the moth or the moths which had the genes or variability to produce more melanin they were more suited for this. The same thing was experimentally tested by a scientist. Scientist's name was Bernard Cattlewell. Bernard Cattlewell tested this industrial melanism. What he did, he took both these moths, that is grey and black. And they were introduced into two areas. One area was the woods of the same place, that is Birmingham. And the same two moths were introduced into a very polluted area. And after a few months, he observed that in the woods where the pollution was very less, that woods were like basically the forest where there were no industries and no human habitation. So pollution or pollutants were definitely very, very less. So in this woods of Birmingham, when he went after a couple of months, he found that the grey colored moths were more in number. He introduced the equal number of grey and black in both the areas. So he found that here the grey number increased and the black, black were very very few. And just reverse in the polluted area. In the polluted area he found that the black moths, their number was very high and the grey ones were very very few. Exactly same what had actually happened during this natural in uh, industrial melanism naturally when this uh, thing was taking place. So this example of industrial melanism helps us understand natural selection. The natural selection theory which was given by Darwin it says that nature selects the organism or that variability which is the most suited for that environmental condition. So this is our first example in support of natural selections or theory of natural selection which was given by Darwin. So in the next video we will take up the next example.